How in the world can Liz manage to make every friend he has mad at him? Stay tuned. A terrible storm has struck the town of Terrarium, blowing over signs and causing lots of other damage as well. Liz, Lucille, Scooter, and some of the other reptile patrollers were camping at Grandpa Anoli's farm on the outskirts of town when the storm hit and have ended up in Grandpa's basement. And that's okay by Liz, because they have a play to rehearse that Liz is directing and performing in. Okay, let's try it one more time from the top. Hello, you're on the air with Dr. Liz on the law. Hello, Dr. Liz. My neighbor is doing some landscaping out in front of his tent, and he set up a statue. What kind of statue? Uh, It looks like a cross between a camel and a goat. Whoa, talk about your bad combinations. Tell me about it. It also sounds like a possible case of idolatry to me. Really? Absolutely. Deuteronomy 5.8. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath, or in the waters below. What's the penalty? Take him to the city gates and stone him to death. Wow. Kind of harsh, isn't it? Hey, the law is the law. Time for one more call. Hello, this is Dr. Liz on the law. Yeah, Dr. Liz, you know, we're not under these harsh punishments for sin anymore. We aren't? Not since the one big sacrifice for our sins came. One big sacrifice. What one big sacrifice? The perfect lamb, Jesus Christ. He died on the cross as the final and complete sacrifice for all of our sins. So there's no need for big rocks anymore. Uh, What about small, smooth stones? Sorry, there's only forgiveness. Wow. Well, that changes everything. I may have to find a new line of work. Well, I can see by the clock on the wall that we're out of time. Thanks for listening to Dr. Liz on the Law. Wonderful. That was great. Thanks, Granny. (laughs) Very good. You all are really coming along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we still have a long ways to go before we can perform it at church on Friday. Spike, you're still late on some of your lines. I'm sorry. Maury, you need to sound younger. Uh, Younger? Okay. Lucille, take a little more time on the one big sacrifice line. Got it. Okay, I want to do it one more time. Let's get it right. The storm raged on through the night, but cleared up in the morning. The lizards came outside and started cleaning up the farm and repairing the damage. Oh, there's a lot to do here, folks. Uh, Pick a spot and start cleaning. Come on. I'll go over here. The lizards all moved off to different parts of the farmyard. Little Scooter noticed an odd pile of rubble next to the barn and started digging through it. Mm. Weird. This stuff looks like airplane parts. There was a loud creaking noise above him. He looked up and was stunned by what he saw. It is an airplane in the loft. Grandpa, Granny, there's somebody over here. The other lizards came running. Quick, help me move some of this stuff. Come on. Oh, my goodness. Look. Yeah, and his plane is in the loft. Wow! He's saying something. Help me. We're we're gonna help you. Uh, Take it easy now. What's your name? Chuckwalla. Chuckwalla. Lonesome Chuckwalla. Oh, Oh, he's he's, he's passed out. Let's get him inside. Uh, Liz, go get Doc uh, Gollywasp, all right? Yes, sir! I, I can't believe it. What, Scooter? This is Lonesome Chuck Walla. Yes, that's what he said. He's the best and most famous racing flyer in Lizarddom. Yeah, I thought I recognized that name. I know all about him. He's called Lonesome because he's always so far out in front of the other racers. He's one of my heroes. While the doctor examined him, Lonesome told everyone what had happened. I was on my way to the big air race when the storm hit, and I was blown off course. I tried to struggle against the wind, but kept getting blown around. Then a flash of lightning hit the wing, and a huge wind gust blew me sideways. I spun out of control and crashed into the barn and the barnyard, where a bunch of debris covered me. Well, you're safe now. Mm -hmm. How is he, Doc? Uh, Banged and bruised, Mm. but he'll be fine. Do have a fractured wrist, though. Uh, oh. I'm going to put it in a cast, mm-hmm. and it'll have to remain immobile for a few weeks. Uh, I'll go get the wrap out of my car. Thank you, Doc. Fine. Great. Just great. 
I was really working hard for that race. I probably would have won it if this hadn't happened to me. Not probably. You would have won it. I know you would. You're the best. It's nice of you to say so, kid. But the truth is, I used to be the best. What? I've fallen on hard times. Oh. The big air race was going to put me back on top. Yeah. Not now, though. Well, don't you worry, Lonesome. Yeah, we're going to nurse you back to hell. Sure, we <laughs> that won't heal my wrist in time for the race. Well, maybe I can help with the race. You? I've studied your whole career, Mr. Lonesome. And I've studied your airplanes, too. I want to be a pilot someday just like you. That's nice, kid. I've but... been messing around for a long time with some ideas for a plane. Hmm. I didn't know that, Scooter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've looked at the wreckage of your plane, Mr. Lonesome, and I think that if Grandpa and Granny will help me, mm -hmm. I can sort of adapt my plans to fix it. Oh. We'll get you back in the race. Uh, we, we'd be happy to help Absolutely. you, Scooter. Well, then what are you all still standing there for? Get going. Chop, chop. Oh, right. Come on, Grandpa. Oh, sure. And you, Granny. How about some food? Oh. Um, oh, okay. Come on, Doc, let's get this wrist wrapped. William, I'm in pain here. Demanding, isn't he? He must be feeling better. Yeah, you'd think he'd be a little more grateful. Yeah, you think he's so? just acting that way because he's hurt. He needs to rest. He'll be different when he feels better. You'll see. Several days passed, and while Granny nursed Lonesome, Grandpa and Scooter fixed the pilot's plane. When Friday rolled around, Liz, Lucille, and the others performed their show at the church. Hello, Dr. Liz. My neighbor is doing some landscaping out in front of his tent, and he set up a statue. What kind of statue? Uh, it looks like a cross between a camel and a goat. Wow, talk about your bad combinations. You got ugly coming and going there. The show was a hit, and Liz's skit was a smash. After the show, the pastor approached him excitedly. Wonderful, Liz. Just wonderful. Thanks, Pastor. We had a lot of visitors tonight, and a lot of them said they wished they had brought their friends to see the performance. Oh, that's great. Yes. So I was wondering if you and your group could perform the show tomorrow night, and then again on Sunday night. Oh, wow. That way we can invite more of the lizards in the community to see it. Really? Oh, of course. The next night, the show was even better. Unfortunately, all of this attention went straight to Liz's head. They love me. They really love me. They love us, Liz. It's just a show. Don't be so egotistical. But when Liz received a standing ovation the next night, his head swelled to monumental proportions, which didn't go unnoticed by Spike and Maury. Lucille, what does Liz think he's doing? He just felt things were dragging a bit and that he needed to pick up the pace. He picked it up all right. He was stepping on our lines and had living all over the place. He's just doing it for the good of the show. The good of the show mm, yeah. or the good of Liz? Mm. Yeah, what a stage hog. Mm. Hey, listen, everybody. Yeah. This is incredible. Okay, the yeah. pastor just told me uh -huh. that a big booking agent heard about the show and oh. wants to see it at the end of the week. Oh, really? <laughs> That's, That's great. great. I can't oh, wait. Okay. This could really be our ticket okay. to the big time. Okay, yeah. we need to revamp the whole show. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, get a good night's sleep okay, okay. and be back here tomorrow right. ready to rehearse. Okay. We'll be But Liz started the rehearsal the next morning with an unfortunate announcement. Okay, listen up, everyone. Uh -huh. I stayed up last night uh -huh. and did a little rewriting on the show. Uh -huh. okay. Here are your new scripts. Let me see that. Hmm. Um, hmm. Liz, there's a lot more Dr. Liz in this version. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. I only uh -huh. have three lines. Uh -huh. I only have two. Ooh. And one of them is only one word. So... What gives, Liz? Well, I noticed that the audience has really responded best to the stuff Lucille and I did. So mm. you're cutting us out? Oh, no, not out. Just down. We gotta go with what works. More Dr. Liz. Well, sure. I mean, come on, guys. Dr. Liz is the reason the agent is coming here. Yeah? Well, since you think Dr. Liz is the whole show, then maybe Dr. Liz should be the whole show. Oh. I'm out of here. Oh, Spike, wait! I'm a Spike. I'm out of here, too. So, oh. Oh. Maury, come on. Fine with me. 
Liz. What? You shouldn't have treated them that way. Well, what about the way they're treating me? They're just jealous. Well, still. Look, we have a lot to do here, Lucille. You're going to need to play their parts oh, now. Oh, boy. So let's get to it. Okay. I start at the bottom of that first speech. Mm-hmm. Hello, you're on the air with Dr. Liz on the law. Hello, Dr. Liz. My neighbor is doing some landscaping out in front of his tent, and he's set up a statue. Okay, hold it. I think you need to be a little more upset. Upset, okay. Yeah. Hello, Dr. Liz. My neighbor's doing some landscaping out in front of um, his tent. Okay, hold on. Um, you know what, uh, Lucille, I think that's too upset. Try oh, okay. splitting the difference. Oh, okay. Okay, try that. All right. Um, hello, Dr. Liz. My neighbor's doing... Okay, wait. Uh, hit neighbor harder. Okay. All right, come on. Hello, Dr. Liz. You know, you know... that hello oh. is wrong. You really need to sound more annoyed. Well, that shouldn't be a problem. Well, it needs to be right. I was doing it right. Well, no, you weren't. Because if you mm. were, I would have had to stop you. Why do you get to decide what's right and wrong? Because I'm the director and star, that's why. Star? Says who? Well, says the audience. Oh. Or didn't you hear all that applause? They were applauding for all of us, Liz. Ah, uh, they were being nice. They gave me the standing ovation. Well, let's see if you can get another one all by yourself. Meaning? Meaning I quit. Understand that? Or didn't I deliver it properly? As a matter of fact, you didn't. Fine, quit. I don't need you. I don't need anybody. In fact, I'm changing the show's name to Liz Live. I made the show a success, and now I'll get all the glory. Meanwhile, Lonesome settled in quite nicely at Grandpa's. A bit too nicely, in fact. He stayed in bed the entire time, even though there was nothing wrong with his legs, just his wrist. He also became quite demanding. So much so that Grandpa got Granny to come over and help. Hey, Granny, how about a refill? Uh, uh, coming right up. I also need a pillow fluff and a new magazine. And, Grandpa, I'd like a bed next to the window. Oh, boy. Granny and Grandpa nearly ran themselves ragged trying to keep Lonesome happy. They wouldn't have minded it so much if Lonesome had shown a little gratitude. Even a simple thank you would be nice. But none came. Just the opposite, in fact. You know, Lonesome, Scooter, Granny, and I have been working hard taking care of you and working on your plane. Yeah, I know. Well, it's taken a lot of time away from my farm chores. Is there a point here? I was wondering if you could maybe pitch in on a few chores. (gasps) You've got to be kidding me. No. You put up a barn right where I'm flying that wrecks my plane and causes me to break my wrist... And now you expect me to do chores? All right, all right. Forget it. Just forget it. The only reason Grandpa and Granny put up with this is because of the one person Lonesome was actually nice to, Scooter. Lonesome's attention made the shy little lizard blossom. See, Mr. Lonesome? We're going to rig the controls so you don't have to use your bad arm to fly. These plans are great, kid. We'll win this race yet. Yes, sir. The day before the race, Granny, Grandpa, and Scooter finished their repairs. The plane was ready. Scooter took Lonesome to the barn to see it. Wonderful, kid. Just wonderful. (laughs) You've done a great job. I couldn't have done it without Grandpa and Granny. You know, winning this race will be the very thing I need to get the respect of the other flyers. Something I've never had. Well, well, you deserve it, Mr. Lonesome. Can't argue with you there, kid. (laughs) Scooter left Lonesome with the plane. The little lizard was very happy because Lonesome was so happy. Scooter went back to the house to tell Grandpa and Granny about how happy Lonesome was. But as he got closer to the house, he heard the adults discussing the situation. Oh, I I know that Lonesome is hurt, but all he does is lay around and take stuff, and it never gives back anything. I know. I mean, we already have a town bum. We do not need another one. Oh, great. Oh, I I mean it, Grandpa. Well, he won't be here much longer. Uh Before he goes, though, I'll uh, I'll have a little talk with him. Yeah, you better. Let him know we should be more uh, appreciative. Mm -hmm. Scooter rushed inside. You're wrong. You're both wrong. Scooter. I just left Lonesome at the plane. You should have seen how happy he was. And he was appreciative. Oh, he wants his respect. And, and now he'll get it. Uh, Scooter. I know Lonesome uh, can be selfish and, and snippy, but that's just because he suffered so much. <sighs> Winning this race will be just what he needs to change his life. Oh, please, Grandpa. Don't talk like that about him, please. Um. Okay, Scooter. 
We'll do it your way, hmm. for now. That night, Liz performed his one-person show. And to everyone's amazement, he was a smash, just as he predicted he'd be. He got another standing ovation. And after the show, the booking agent raved about it. I'm going to take you to the big time, kid. Your name will be in lights. Wow! Liz was very happy and wanted to share his good fortune with his friends. But when he finally got dressed and came out, the church was empty. I got to find him. I got to tell him. He went looking and finally found them in the church's all-purpose room, talking. He stayed outside the door, listening. Well, we have to give Liz credit. He did a great show. Yeah, all by himself. Well, I hope he's happy that way, because the way he's acting, he's going to be spending a lot of time by himself from now on. <sighs> yeah, you're right. Come on, let's get some pizza. Well, should we wait for Liz? Why? He wouldn't wait for us. Come on. Alone. All alone. I didn't think about that. The next day was the big air race. Grandpa, Granny, and Scooter took Lonesome and his modified plane to the race site. It was an exciting race, very close. But at the last second, Lonesome roared to first place and the win. Lonesome stepped up to the podium proudly to receive his trophy. I'd like to thank one person for helping me win this trophy. Scooter beamed. I'd like to, but there weren't any. I did it all myself. What? Oh, no. <laughs> Just supposed to show you what hard work, fortitude, and believing in yourself can lead to. And with that, he took the trophy and the prize money and left. Scooter was crushed. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, Scooter. Oh. Scooter, I am so sorry. <laughs> Grandpa found Lonesome in the barn, packing up his plane. Getting ready to leave, huh? Yep, in the morning. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to uh, congratulate you on your victory. Well, I deserve it after all I've been through. Yeah, yeah, you, you've been through a lot, all right. And it's fortunate you've had help to get through it. Help? What do you mean? What help? How about uh, everything we've all done for you while you've been laid up? Especially Scooter. We used his designs and ideas to rebuild your plane in a way that won you the race and put you back on top. You're exaggerating a little, aren't you? No, I'm not. Would it have been so much trouble to share some of your glory with Scooter? A simple thank you? You know, someone who does nothing but take, take, take and never gives is not going to have very many friends in life. What's your point? Uh, I can't believe you're so selfish. <laughs> uh, Mr. Lonesome? Scooter, you, you shouldn't be in here. It's okay, Grandpa. I have something I want to say to Mr. Lonesome. If you're going to blast me, kid, make it quick. I still got packing no, to do. No, I, I don't want to blast you, Mr. Lonesome. I want you to have these. What is this, hate mail? Uh, no, sir. It's the plans I made to rebuild your airplane. What? They're all yours. But... You want to keep these to build yourself a plane one day. It's more important that you have them. Go out and win more races, Mr. Lonesome. I... You still can't say it, can you? I think I know the real reason they call you Lonesome. And Lonesome left a little while later. At the park the next morning, Lucille, Spike, and Maury sat on the swings, feeling down. So... What do you think our next play should be? Who knows? Liz usually comes up with the plays. Liz is probably on the road with the agent by now. On his way to fame and fortune. Not really. <gasps> Liz! What are you doing here? Yeah, why aren't you off with your big agent? I started to go. But just as I was about to get aboard the bus, I started missing you all. Really bad. So I told the agent I would love to be a star but not at the cost of my friends. You turned him down? Yeah, I did. And I also realized I need to make a few apologies to all of you. I'm really sorry for the way I acted. I let the fame go to my head. I promise from now on to share the stage with everyone. 
And I have an idea for a brand new show, if you're interested. Okay, I understand. I'll see you all around. So what's the new idea? Well, it's about a guy who learns how important it is not to be selfish and full of pride. It's based on first-hand experience. You interested? Hmm, are there parts for everyone? <laughs> Absolutely. They all gathered around him and welcomed him back. And just then... It's headed toward Grandpa's farm! Grandpa, Granny, and Scooter were on the porch. Mm, guess my little speech didn't do a whole lot of good. Uh, yeah, but it was still very nice of you to be so generous, Scooter. Oh, mm-hmm. I was just trying to do what Grandpa taught us in church. You don't share because you want to get something back. You share because it's the right thing to do. And mm-hmm. that's right. That's mm-hmm. Listen! It's lonesome! Well, lonesome. I just can't believe it! Lonesome threw something out of the plane, and a parachuted bundle floated to the ground. Grandpa opened it. Mm. Well, what is it, well, Grandpa? There's, there's, a, there's a note. Uh, I used some of the prize money from the race to buy these gift certificates. Wow. Wow. They're for $100 each. $100? One for you, oh. Granny, and wow. one for me. Well, but, Grandpa, uh, is that all? Um, yeah. I'm sorry, <sighs> Scooter. It's okay. Oh, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look. They all looked up to see Lonesome unfurl from behind the plane a huge banner that read, Thank you, Scooter. I owe it all to you. you there. Oh. <laughs> Why, the whole town should be able to read that. And look at there. He is throwing something else oh, out. Oh. Another parachuted bundle floated to the ground. It had Scooter's name written on it. He unfolded it. Oh, What you oh. got there? Wow. It's the Air Race Trophy. Oh, and look down here. Engraved right next to Lonesome's name is yours. Scooter. (laughs) I told you he's the best. (laughs) That's not. Well, I guess my little talk did some good after all. Oh, but look, it looks like he's leaving. (laughs) Oh, there he goes. Uh, Bye-bye, Lonesome. Lonesome. Take care now. now. Take care. They all watched as Lonesome waved goodbye, circled the farm one last time, and headed off and crashed right into the water tower on the edge of town. (sighs) Oh boy, here we go again. Lonesome may be the best, but he sure needs to watch where he's going. But I think both he and Liz understand Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2 a little better now. It says, When pride comes, shame follows, but wisdom comes to those who are not proud. This is how Jesus lived. Paul explains in Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4, Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be free of pride. Think of others as better than yourselves. None of you should look out just for your own good. You should also look out for the good of others. You should think in the same way Christ Jesus does. It's a terrible thing to give in to pride. It can make you treat people badly, like lonesome, or lose your friends, like Liz almost did. If you're ever tempted to think more highly of yourself than you ought to, remember the way that Jesus lived and ask God to help you be humble. You'll be glad you did.